Um, is the sound getting through? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello, so, Minister. Yeah. Sorry for the connection issues. I'm slightly late, but I think we have a stable connection now. Yeah. I'm I'm very happy to meet you. I'm sorry it's uh, over GVC instead of in person, but I hope it'll be in person one of these days. Sure thing. Sure thing. Yeah. So how's it going? Well, uh, it's going well, and thank you very much for taking the time. We had actually planned. I'd plan planned to bring the whole team, the whole Asia team. To Taiwan, uh, we were hoping this spring, but maybe we'll just have to wait a little bit, and we'll still be able to go. Because I'm very eager to bring the, the team to Taiwan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, looking forward to. But thanks so much for for uh, taking the time. Um, I copied you on a letter that I sent to the president. Yes. Mm -hmm. About Google's what Google's doing to try to be helpful, mm -hmm. and uh, and Anita. Who my colleague? I, actually, I should start with introducing my colleagues. Uh, Anita Chen, you can probably see. Hi. 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 Long time no see. Well, not really. Person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never seen each other in person. That's right. That's right. We we work with, with each other quite closely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Tina Lin, uh -huh. can Tina? you see? Here's Tina. Hi. Hi, hi, This is Tina. I'm in charge of the Google Taiwan uh, sales mm -hmm. business in Taiwan. Yeah, we Taiwan. yeah we, we work together during the Mask 2.0, during the eMask for all sort of different things. So thank you so much for for all your support. Thank you. Thank you. And then and is Lan there, Lan Chang. Yes. Hi. Hi. I cover communications in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, this awesome. Plan. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. So, so because of social distancing, yeah, I actually have, have to, to keep them away from me. <laughs> they are in the room. They will. Yeah. Yes. Very safe. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. Well, we're we really do want to do what we can. I, uh, Anita has shared with me uh, a lot about what you all have been doing to deal with COVID, mm -hmm. and I have to say, it's very fortunate that you have a vice president who has who's an epidemiologist. Mm -hmm. Um, how many around the world have such... Well, uh, actually, the epidemiologist, because he literally wrote a textbook of epidemiology. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the right leader in the right place at the right time. That's right. So, and, and congratulations. Mm -hmm. Only 444 cases. Mm -hmm. I understand there have now been 28 days without... Yeah. Local case. Yeah, we're relaxing a lot of things. Uh, I mean, our professional baseball now have like thousands of all people in the audience. So, so we're life is wow. migrating to the new normal now. Wow, I can't wait till that happens to to the rest of the world. But but uh, congratulations. Uh, the it's so clear that SARS taught Taiwan so much mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about how to deal with a crisis like this. That's right. And you're way ahead of the rest of the world, mm -hmm. and so I think the rest of the world is is very eager to learn from your success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What on the on the policy side, it's really clear that you've had terrific, very smart science-based policies. Mm -hmm. uh, on technology, what have been some of the secrets? What are the yeah. what have the ways you've deployed technology. And in, indeed, uh, I must praise the ease of use of the Google Places and Map API because that's literally how our mask rationing system hinges upon. Uh, when we Good. initially distributed the mask through convenience stores, um, there is a GDG, that's Google Developer Group uh, uh, in Tainan, uh, one of the southern uh, cities that's very quickly become the cultural capital and is already the capital for food. Uh, and you know how developers love uh, good food and so they have a, a group of people there um, that just started prototyping uh, a uh, well it's like Ushahidi if you know that it's people who voluntarily report how many uh, convenience stores still have masks and how many of them are out of stock so it's a crowd reporting to a collective intelligence system Fantastic. yeah and and unlike uh, many other uh, map API providers I think the GDG has already well equipped themselves so that they can prototype it in a map matter of minutes, not of days. And that is essential because then it showed everybody what is possible. And the very next Monday, I just presented that Google Map API uh, and uh, visualization to our premier saying that we really got to support um, this, this guy. And, and uh, especially because he's uh, at that time, I think, owes Google 20K US dollars <laughs> in <laughs> API credits. 
<laughs> I really need to support them financially. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm happy that eventually the CSR team uh, wrote it off. Uh, but I think um, this is a, a really good story of not your traditional PPP, which is a government setting the agenda for the private sector to enlist social sector support. Rather, this is the social sector setting the agenda, and they enlist the public sector to work with the private sector, such as Google, to realize their design. So we become like vendors of those civic technologies. Wow. And I think that is really the key of the success of the fairness, because then uh, the real-time map let everybody see that a pharmacy distribution is fair. You can go to a pharmacy, swipe your NHI card, and see for yourself after a couple of minutes that a stock level um, decreased by nine. Uh, and this is a participatory ledger, almost like a blockchain um, that uh, increased everybody's um, trust in each other instead of a daily publication. Wow. This is a real-time publication. But transparency is the key. That's right. You, and you, you, you had already established a lot of credibility through mm -hmm. policies that you've chosen mm -hmm. as government. Mm -hmm. So then you're able to engage the social sector mm -hmm. in a really positive mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really beneficial way. Right, right. To trust them with open data, as we say. Yeah. Well, a lot of countries could learn from that. There are a lot of countries that follow a different model mm -hmm. where there is less transparency mm -hmm. and where the social sector isn't as supported mm -hmm. as it is in Taiwan. So mm -hmm. I guess some of the ingredients you have because you're a democracy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're a working democracy and you have very energetic NGOs, very energetic civil society. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part of the, that's part of the story yeah, of I, I, I was just talking to a, a journalist this morning uh, from Wired, uh, and I said that uh, when we had the first uh, presidential election in 96, the World Web is already part of the, the culture, right? Uh, and so people know that uh, there's a lot of things that could change because the power structure has uh, massively changed with the World Web. Uh, and uh, during that time, I think in a decade or so, even our constitution went through six or seven revisions. Um, and so, unlike many other older Republican tradition um, democracies, uh, we don't have hundreds of years of proud tradition. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. our constitution and our polity, the design of our administration and legislation is as malleable as the World Web itself. And, and people really put a lot of energy into thinking innovation also about democracy, not just under democracy. And that was, 96, was that Chen Shui Bian? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's the right. Election. Uh, the yeah. election of Li Denghui uh, in '96, and then ah, the no. next term is uh, Chen Shui-bian. Chen Shui-bian. Mm -hmm. oh. You also, I should congratulate you. Also, la this is now one year anniversary mm -hmm. of marriage equality in Taiwan. That's right. That's first, right. Yeah. The first in Asia. Right. And, and, I, I used to yes. faster Vietnam, yeah. and mm -hmm. we. I, I at that time I thought maybe Vietnam would be the first, but mm -hmm. you're the first. Yeah, or Thailand, but. We're the first, and, and we, we got ahead because we work in a way that uh, connects intergenerational solidarity, because it, we introduce a truly innovative model uh, that I call jiehun bu jieyin, or uh, we marry the bylaws but not the in-laws. Uh, and, and that really <laughs> really convinced the, the, the people who are of a kind of elderly imagination uh, of like the, the wedding is between a couple, but the marriage is between two families. I'm like, yeah. okay, so, um, you know, marriage equality is about the bylaws, the same rights and responsibility, but it doesn't marry the families and everybody happy with that. Well, at least they can live with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a lesson that other Asian Asian countries could learn. Mm. Uh, when I was in Vietnam, uh, Vietnam was the, f the first to enable transgender people to change their mm -hmm. gender on their mm -hmm. identity card. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. crucial if you're trying to get health insurance, mm -hmm. if you're trying to get health care, any kind of health care. Mm -hmm. That's critical. So it was a big step. There are lots more steps to go. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, definitely. And and nowadays, uh, in our kind of famously digitized um, uh, health declaration card, when you fly into to Taipei, um, the the other gender uh, is displayed uh, prominently, so that people That's from Australia or, or other places where the neutral gender is recognized, uh, they can actually just tick that box. And very soon, uh, we will also roll out in our resident certificates as well, so that we'll have this national ID number uh, that allows for a, a gender neutral and non-binary gender as well. So that is uh, for foreign uh, nationals, I mean. So I think that is a, 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 another big step. Uh, people can uh, choose to be non-binary in our uh, software systems, not just uh, in our uh, legal systems. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And it's been really interesting 
uh, for us to see how committed uh, President Tsai is to mm -hmm. a digital economy, mm -hmm. making your services available digitally, mm -hmm. uh, to digital education. It's, it's uh, again, a, a model for, for much of the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you have played not a small role in that, in that whole process. Mm -hmm. Well, mostly as a inspiration, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I see my, my name uh, being used in, in Japan or in South Korea, but it doesn't really sound like me or seem like me. It, it seems like they're, they're using kind of a model of me to uh, inspire their cabinet members. I, I'm fine with that remix, Creative Commons and all, <laughs> but it doesn't really seem like myself. <laughs> as long as it's so you're associated with something you believe in and care about, then mm -hmm. it's okay. That's right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we've, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Anita has told you about this, we've been really happy to be able to provide ad grants that would be helpful to the mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. to SMBs, because mm -hmm. we, we want to be part of Taiwan's economic recovery. Mm -hmm. you know, part of getting small businesses back up to speed, getting schools, students back up to speed. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we will be able to contribute. That's awesome. But if you have ideas, if, you have, if there are things that we could be doing and that uh, we're not yet doing, we are we are open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we are uh, we are at the moment still at the uh, kind of uh, defending against coronavirus stage. But soon yeah. uh, we will migrate uh, to the revitalization stage, uh, as you said, the, the recovery stage. But uh, we don't call it recovery because we never really had a lockdown. Uh, we didn't close at all. So it's, there's nothing much to recover from. But uh, we really want to re revitalize um, the economy. And there's quite a few uh, plans in the works uh, that will encourage people to uh, spend more uh, on the SMEs. Uh, because it's true that during the uh, coronavirus, Virus, even that we had no lockdowns, you see a, a large boom uh, in, for example, food delivery services, online platforms, and so on. They're primarily um, e-commerce, and and so uh, conversely, the large gathering places such as the uh, wedding banquets, restaurants, and so on, they, they do suffer, and they tend to be um, SMEs and not chain convenience stores or things like that. So we're uh, designing a, a stimulus package actually right after this uh, video conference, and then I'll, I'll keep you posted um, when uh, it comes to fruition and I think there's plenty of ways that Google can help. Yeah. Well thank you. We we would like to be involved. Mm -hmm. I also think it's gonna set the tone for others in the region. Mm -hmm. um, yours is, a, is an open economy. Mm -hmm. You 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 know I, I know you were the first to get on board planes and make sure people were mm -hmm. were uh, uh, you know safe getting on and off planes. Yeah, At the some point first the day of this yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's got to start up again. Mm -hmm. uh, flights will start up again. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You'll have more imported cases. Mm -hmm. It's not going to it's not going to suddenly be OK. Mm -hmm. We're not going to suddenly see blue skies. Mm -hmm. And so we feel like the 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 economic recovery, such as it is mm -hmm. uh, in the region in particular, mm -hmm. is really a long term process. It is. And we feel like the key is going to be small, and medium sized businesses because they are what make up most of the economy mm -hmm. in most of the countries in Asia-Pacific. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's true. And the MISMIs uh, also are uh, uh, particularly, it gives them the reason for digital transformation. Um, previously, many yeah. MISMIs has no reason uh, to digitally transform themselves because they have a, a kind of a flurry of uh, business from, from the places that they used to run, uh, like a physical store and things like that. Yes. But um, during this time, everybody need to pause a little bit and think how to digitally transform themselves. And so I think, uh, indeed, uh, the larger companies, on the other hand, and probably all have uh, business continuity and high availability plans uh, in place. So right. I think it's, it's crucially important uh, that we offer the particular tools and the know-how uh, of digitally transform the business itself, not just the way that it interacts with its uh, customers. If I can well, three tools that we hope are going to be useful. Mm -hmm. There's uh, Digital Garage, there's mm -hmm. Google My Business, mm -hmm. there's the Remote Work page. All of those are skilling tools mm -hmm. that we help. SMBs will take advantage of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and help them, you know, move into this digital era that the president and you have been talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And we want to make sure that they're appropriate for the Taiwanese context as well as for other contexts. I think Anita is trying to say something. Yeah, I was oh, going to... Um, no, no, no. I was just going to add a little bit about digital transformation SMB. Mm -hmm. This is something that I... Um, 
Uh, I myself and Tina and Len here, we have actually been discussing with the Taiwan Google Taiwan team. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have more details in the coming weeks, but it literally is centered around how we how we assist SMBs, uh, especially important in Taiwan because a large portion of the economy in Taiwan mm -hmm. is SMB. Right. And like Audrey said, mm -hmm. they are uh, particularly vulnerable to a mm -hmm. uh, down, down, downturn like this. So we're, we're talking about how we're going to uh, use Google uh, products and services uh, to help them and also provide them with uh, tools. On digital transformation, that is actually a uh, a topic that we actually have been working on even before COVID. That's and right. at this point, it actually seems more important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I've been talking with uh, Tina's team uh, on how we can help uh, provide trainings, you know, whether it's Google tools or it's non-Google tools. Uh, we want to go out there and talk to SMBs and then, you know, really answer their questions. And uh, I've attended a few of those sessions and I found that sometimes uh, even, uh, uh, you know, a, even just a session to walk them through very simple things. Mm -hmm. It's the peace of mind. It's the letting people know that, yes, you're doing this right. And mm -hmm. yes, you can ask us questions and you have support. That mm -hmm. really is important. So all of these uh, hopefully will, uh, will will come to uh, some sort of a final package in a, in a few weeks. And mm -hmm. Audrey, I'll definitely keep you posted when we have more details. I'm well, really looking forward to it. Uh, it will coincide nicely with our own timeline <laughs> for the stimulus yeah, package. Good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. The other thing we're, we're working really hard on is making sure that we're putting out authoritative information. Mm -hmm. We're an information company. Mm -hmm. We want our information to be as authoritative as possible. I mean, the good, good news in, in Taiwan is you have TCDC mm -hmm. that has been putting out authoritative information. We've been able to steer people to that information and not to the, the sources of you know, the people who are trying to make money off the pandemic mm -hmm. or those who are making up stories about uh, uh, the medicine that are, not, that are not accurate. And we've actually literally removed millions of YouTube videos that were not accurate. We've been uh, really, really ruthless during. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I've heard pandemic. that from the more than 140 uh, mask uh, distribution app makers. They say that as soon as they put any advertisement on it, or as soon as they put a merchandise link, it just get delisted from Google Play like within minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. So, right. so nobody no, is did. allowed to to profit from the accurate yeah. information uh, thing. I think this is really nice. We think it's really important. I mean, look at the way you all have been acting during this this crisis. You've sent 17 million masks mm -hmm. to countries that needed them, three and a half million to my country. Mm -hmm. and I really appreciate it mm -hmm. uh, because you geared up so fast mm -hmm. uh, and you you had learned so much from from SARS and you knew what to do. And you were not profiting from this crisis. Mm -hmm. We are not seeking to profit from this crisis, mm -hmm. but we are seeking to help countries get back on their feet, get businesses get back on their feet, and students mm -hmm. get back on their feet. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, we think that's going to be really important in the time to come. Very much so, very much so. Yeah. But whatever, you know, please, we'd like, I'd love to continue this dialogue. I'd like to, you know, come and, and visit with you when we mm -hmm. finally do get to Taiwan. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're really thrilled that uh, the president was able to stop by our Mm -hmm. uh, our Google campus. Yep. Uh, we're building a new engineering campus. Our numbers in Taiwan keep going up. Mm -hmm. A lot of talent there. Yeah. And uh, so I think after after India, uh, Taiwan the second largest in mm -hmm. in Asia Pacific in terms of number of people hired, more than two thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're 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 committed. Uh, we're gonna uh, the the commitment continues. Uh, we w we really are determined to be as helpful as possible at this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's great, and uh, I also welcome the the news that this um, Trans Pacific uh, fiber optic line um, is getting to its final stages uh, of, of approval. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I think this this uh, real is really symbolic uh, geopolitically uh, as well. It, it means that we're we're firmly on the side of. Uh, liberal democracy, and we're really happy to share uh, the exchanges that we had with Google, um, both on promoting renewable energy, on um, responsible um, counter disinformation strategies, and things like that. I mean, we, we don't always agree 100%, but at
at the end of it, we always end up with something that we can all live with. And, and this is important, especially around East Asia, because um, all too often, many jurisdictions take a kind of top-down approach uh, when it comes to internet yeah. governance. And, and we're adhering uh, strictly to the internet governance norms. And we would always do norm shaping before uh, legalization. And, and I think Anita also <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> in our previous work. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Ted, if I can add a few things, I want to, mm -hmm. sure. you know, thank Audrey for all of her help. Because uh, mm -hmm. last year, especially before the election, there was a lot of different opinions in mm -hmm. Taiwan mm -hmm. to how the disinformation phenomenon should be governed mm -hmm. uh, in Taiwan. But Audrey is mm -hmm. a very important partner of ours, and she helped us to communicate our position and our proactive measures to mm -hmm. the government, to, to her other government mm -hmm. fellow. So they understand what mm -hmm. is important, what is at stake. Mm -hmm. And I think through the, I, I hope Audrey, uh, mm -hmm. through the 2019, mm -hmm. all of the activities and initiatives that you mm -hmm. uh, now have, you and you are fellow mm -hmm. government officials now have a better idea of uh, uh, the proactive and mm -hmm. self-voluntary measures mm -hmm. that we have taken mm -hmm. while ensuring that uh, the internet remains free mm -hmm. and open. Yeah, basically you implemented our control UN norms without us having to put a law to it. <laughs> and I think this is, much, this better is the best, yeah, much better that way, much better than the other way around. Yeah. Yes, that's, well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And you had a successful election. You had a mm -hmm. successful and, and fair election. Mm -hmm. And early in 2019, I think there were, we all had a lot of worries about that mm -hmm. and how much misinformation might be used. Mm -hmm. I know we were, we did a lot of training both on the executive side and the legislative side, mm -hmm. uh, where we've been very committed to fact checking That's right. uh, of all kinds, and mm -hmm. uh, you know we're able to to dig deep, mm -hmm. and in the end, uh, it was a successful and fair election. Yeah, and and everybody learned the importance of uh, timely response and humor over rumor. Uh, and even yeah. now, the spokes dog yeah. of the CECC is still trendy among all the different age groups. It's not just among young people, but the elderly also love the Zongchai, the dog uh, meme that uh, shares hand sanitation rules and social distancing rules. So I would say that these uh, trainings and these uh, knowledge exchange sessions are really played a large part. Yeah. That's really good to hear, and I'm also happy to report, Audrey, that we're we're continuing with uh, similar activities and actually uh, expanding it this year. Now, of course, with COVID, we're also being creative, shifting things to online. Sure. And again, I'm working on these uh, plans, but when I have more details our company, I'll definitely let you know. But this remains a very important priority for us in Taiwan, and we continue to work with uh, uh, outside partners like uh, Taiwan Fact Check Centers or My Go Pan and increase their capacity while we work together. And then again, I'll, I'll later at, at a certain point, I'll let you know when we have more confirmed details. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I also personally learned a lot uh, with the uh, interactions in your workshops with uh, YouTubers and journalists and, and things like that. And because after going into the cabinet, uh, I, I really haven't practiced so much uh, at this YouTuber know-how. <laughs> and I get to <laughs> learn from the best when, when they share that in your workshop. I just had a uh, recording session this morning with Adi, one of the YouTubers uh, in Taiwan, uh, on the Taiwan Can Help That Us uh, campaign. Uh, and that campaign again shows how the social sector can even take public diplomacy and, and um, uplift it uh, into a very uh, successful not just social media campaign but actually real world campaign where uh, there's a lot of offline support uh, after the New York Times advertisement as well. Um, and so I think um, YouTube also played uh, quite a part uh, in making this a reality. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube has, I mean, the vice president has been a good user of YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. getting, you know, talking to to Bloomberg, uh, mm -hmm. Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, mm -hmm. and Johns Hopkins has been one of the most authoritative sources for the world That's on right. COVID. That's right. And so I, I was really, it was really interesting to see him have an exchange with the dean there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because he's an epidemiologist. He knows what he's talking about. And so he's just when he speaks, he's putting out authoritative information mm -hmm. on the virus, and he's also putting out wise policy advice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, science based mm -hmm. policy advice. Mm -hmm. And I just wish the rest of the world would listen. And you know, some parts of the world are listening, 
uh, and some parts haven't been so good about listening. Oh, so. but the crash course that VP Chen Jianren recorded, uh, a crash course on epidemiology, is on YouTube, and it's being translated into like 17 languages or something. So that's also something that you can talk to Adi and Hao and that's see fantastic. how to amplify that message. It's right on the front page of Taiwan Can Help that us. Yeah. That's amazing, and that's what you know. That's what we need to be able to do. We need need to be able to put out information. People who know what they're talking about mm -hmm. uh, are sharing, and he certainly does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on, on this topic of YouTuber, I uh, Ted, I I may have uh, included in my one of my reports, but uh, I think one of the uh, different characteristics of Taiwan's YouTuber communities is that they really like to work together. So in early uh, March. They actually came up with this idea of uh, how about we, I think about seven of them, they uh, recorded uh, a clip because they are all very popular. They all have a lot of viewers. So record a clip to tell people how to, how do you wash your head properly? Where do you, you know, where do you need, uh, need to wear a mask? Mm -hmm. And they also talk about, you know, do not, do not panic. This is a time that we work together. If we all work together, uh, we'll get through the crisis. And they did this completely voluntarily mm -hmm. and, and work with us. And that is really uh, uh, something, mm -hmm. a really phenomenon project mm -hmm. that um, you don't see a lot in other places. It's a genuine vaccine against the infodemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, there are, I mean, that's the, that's the obvert, the reverse of what we were talking about. Those who are trying to take advantage of the pandemic mm -hmm. to make money. These are people who, you know, see they have a chance. You know, uh, 23 million citizens need to know what to do to stay safe, mm -hmm. and they want to help those 23 mm -hmm. million citizens. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's quite an inspiration. Cool. So um, I don't know if uh, all of you have questions for us, or if mm -hmm. Ted, you have uh, um, any further questions for all three. But mm -hmm. I mean. I'm happy to continue this inspiring discussion, but I also know that both of you have a, a lot of other um, missions and duties. Right, so. right. I think I, I need to explain my radical transparency uh, ideas. Uh, so we make a transcript of this conversation. Uh, we will not publish the video unless you do. Uh, and then we'll send the transcript over for you to edit as you see fit. You can change any part uh, that you have set. And then we publish usually after 10 days. Uh, that is uh, my kind of rule entering the cabinet uh, for all the uh, conversations and interview and even internal meetings uh, that I chair. Yeah. Great. I, I, I'm all in favor of transparency. I think mm -hmm. transparency is a way to govern well, mm -hmm. uh, is to use maximum trans radical transparency, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's good governance, in my view. Yeah, excellent. Great. So that, that's the only, only thing. So very nice meeting you and looking forward to meet you in person where we don't have to wear a mask each. Uh, so I look forward to that too. Uh, so before we all sign off, mm -hmm. can I take a photo of the two of you? Of course. Sure. Uh, let me turn off my own, my own camera so it's only the two of you. Okay. And I think Audrey, you need to maybe either push your computer back a little or you move your chair like this. this okay, like this. Like yes, I think okay. this is good. Okay. All right, let me. Okay, to control comment for you, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, ready, guys? Mm -hmm. One, okay. two, three. Wait, control shift three. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Pause along. Ready? One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right, perfect. Yay. Yay. Thank awesome. you. All right. Thank you so much, both. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Very much so, very much so. And we're going to come and have some good meals in mm -hmm. Taipei and, and uh, learn about all that you're doing and, and uh, learn and we're inspired by your model. Yes, very much so. And so have a good local time and see you next time. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you, Audrey. Bye. Thank you, Tina. Thanks, Anita.